Good morning, dear colleagues. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity for inviting me to take part in this session. I would like to thank our experts who have agreed to take part in the discussions of this rather complex problem. Recently, uh, we are paying increasing attention to cervical cancer management because for a long time, early stage disease surgery um, uh, surgery was um, a standard for early stages of the disease um, and one that resulted in fairly good long-term results. Radical hysterectomy has undergone significant change over the past 30 years and um, we are talking more and more about minimally invasive access, minimally invasive technologies. This trend was related to the need to obtain better uh, results, minimize surgical injury, surgical trauma. And it was also related to the expanding uh, technological capacities uh, that we now can enjoy, that we now can use. Laparoscopy in uh, um, onco-gynecology is a very young technique, if I can say so. The large-scale meta-analyses that have been published since this technology became available have demonstrated good oncological outcomes in treating early-stage uh, cervical cancer. And in essence, we have seen a number of public organizations making, creating guidelines for uh, including this uh, technology in the inventory of the methods available to us. In 2018, a study was published which is fairly large scale and has represented a benchmark in our discussion of the um, possibilities and prospects of minimally invasive surgery. The, uh, and this is like study. Uh, the study involved 319 patients. We have analyzed um, inspired by this study, we have analyzed uh, some of the results that our center has obtained. We started using this method uh, in 2012. At present, our clinic has accumulated enough experience, um, well, um, has accumulated experience of uh, managing um, a population of patients, a cater of patients, uh, 128. And this got us thinking about how we can best develop this methodology. Many clinics see uh, minimally invasive surgery as a huge watershed moment for uh, oncogynecology. If we talk about the modern reality, why don't we focus on the experience we have amassed in our clinic. In 2012, we first started using minimally invasive surgeries. Over the past five years, the clinic performs about 20 operations per year in uh, early cervical cancer patients. It may be preposterous to compare our results with the LAC study, but we have done our best to compare the published data with the findings available to us. Similarly to 33 uh, centers across, uh, across the world, um, the majority of our patients uh, have squamous cell carcinoma. Um, 
many of them are at the B1, 1B1 stage. Initially, we focused on um, the um, uh, group with most favorable prospects, with most favor favorable prognosis for radical hysterectomy. We attempted to standardize different options for radical hysterectomy. Most of our patients are ones undergoing type 3 hysterectomy or type C1 nerve saving hysterectomy according to uh, Dennis Curley's classification. We have standardized radical hysterectomy and developed a step-by-step -step algorithm for this intervention where we identify the mobilization, the facial dissection, and uh, perimetroectomy um, stages. I won't focus too single-mindedly on uh, the technicalities of the surgical process. However, uh, laparoscopy has made it possible for us to take a different view on the philosophy on the ide uh, ideology of radical hysterectomy. We see the advantages, the strengths of interfacial surgery. And the ability to visualize intrafacial spaces, the criteria for per uh, perimetrial resection, remain standard. Remain the standard in um, achieving verticality. In our study, we also build on the experience of using sentinel lymph nodes. And despite um, a very clear and a very rigid selection procedure, lymph node detection, sentinel lymph node detection, has enabled us to identify 30% of uh, uh, patients with uh, metastasis, micrometastasis in lymph nodes. In lymph nodes. These uh, patients represent a very special population, and it's a very unfavorable prognostic factor, a very unfavorable predictor. Radicalism principles uh, are quite important. Patomorphological studies, tests, investigations uh, definitely determine the disease prognosis. In our study, Pathological, uh, the, um, the pathological test uh, investigations um, seldom revealed positive margins. At the same time, uh, the uh, uh, sum of prognostic factors, the combination of prognostic factors, has made us possible to um, uh, perform effective management. Uh, many of the patients were prescribed, were administered, uh, uh, were prescribed adjuvant therapy. Up to 60 patients were followed up uh, for uh, four years and displayed um, positive results. So disease-free um, survival averaged 94 percent. There were three uh, cases of recurrency in um, uh, in our patients, one of uh, one of the patients had um, colpatomic um, uh, recurrence in the area of the surgical wound, and uh, more remote um, sequelae, uh, more, rem uh, more remote recurrences uh, in two other patients. Of course, these data require very careful analysis. Uh, yeah. So we tried to 
analyze uh, the uh, problems that might be associated with the um, um, with the problems uh, with the non-invasive uh, surgery. Of course, it's associated with the surgeon with the indicators for um, uh, the microinvasive uh, intervention. And of course, we shouldn't forget about the biological specifics of the uh, uterus tumor. As for the indications, let me say once again that um, um, we rely very much on the proper selection of the patients and a very important criteria for the uh, selection of patients for the minimal invas invasion uh, surgery is the size of the uh, tumor. If it is over two centimeters visually, then uh, there is uh, no chance that there will be uh, uh, low invasion uh, surgery. If we look at the data published on uh, concerning the distant results, the uh, tumor over two centimeters in size prognostically is uh, um, um, a negative factor uh, that uh, worsens the results of the surgical treatment, whether it is open surgery or whether it is um, uh, minimal invasion surgery. And today we are witnesses of the change, changes in the staging of the uh, disease. And uh, 1B uh, is a tumor uh, up to 2 centimeters. Next. And uh, it's a matter that is being discussed quite often. It is the use of the um, uterus manipulator. On the one hand, uh, the uh, instrument that makes it possible to improve the uh, technique of uh, surgical treatment and prevents the loss of uh, CO2, um, uh, improves the manipulations uh, at the time of uh, surgery. Uh, but at the same time, as I see it, the use of this particular instrument, the use of the manipulator with the visual tumor is not that feasible um, um, when, uh, when there is a low invasion access in question. Uh, what is the instrument that is most uh, often used? It's uh, uh, that particular instrument, but we really have to think about how to improve the uh, technical um, issues associated with it, uh, with the manipulator. Talking about laparoscopy, we don't want to say that it is a separate um, uh, uh, field of surgery. Laparoscopy is uh, a part of surgery, it is, it, and it focuses to improve the um, outcomes and the surgical skills on the one hand are very important. On the other hand, it's very important to be able to reproduce the method. So this is what uh, at the moment we focus on. And from the point of view of the development of surgery, these are the important issues. From um, radical distractomy, now, um, um, uh, it's rather difficult to have um, uh, result, results that are absolutely the same. Now, we really have to think of how to randomize surgeons, surgeons from the point of view of carrying out this particular type of uh, interference. There is a, a curve of training, of training in um, um, minimal invasion uh, access. And there are certain criteria already, but the process is quite difficult. So the number of surgeries carried out by one a uh, surgeon is a very important indicator in this sense. But on the other hand, there is data today that demonstrates the absolute relationship between the unfavorable outcomes uh, with the uh, uh, hospital uh, as such. And uh, hospitals with, with a certain level of surgery, uh, well, less than 32 surgeries per year. These are um, hospitals uh, that do not have experience enough uh, and uh, can hardly have positive results. So all this is interconnected. So the situation we're facing is difficult enough for analysis and for decision making. But today, today we 
uh, we speak about the um, negative factors of the microinvasive uh, access. Uh, Culpatomy, for example, the uh, uh, opening of the um, uh, vagina uh, during the surgery. This is the factor we pay attention to, and we believe that this is one of the unfavorable factors. And there are certain studies that uh, demonstrate the combination of culpatomy with uh, carboxyperitoneum um, as an um, independent uh, prognostically negative factor for the outcomes of the early stages of cervical uh, cancer. Now, apart from uh, technical specifics of the uh, of surgery, of the surgical factors such uh, of importance is uh, the uh, biological component of tumor. And uh, uh, today, uh, the uh, LACC um, uh, trial results we discussed today, um, that's not a step backwards, but it's a step forward. And uh, thanks to the fact that this particular study is in place, that we can uh, stop, so to speak. We can think, we can consider uh, the uh, new technologies. We uh, should start think about the new training centers, about the development of the technical aspects associated with this type of surgery. And uh, the um, uh, results published today make us think about the proper indications for this type of surgery. Now, the demonstrated results uh, today um, um, are already post uh, um, uh, LASC uh, uh, trial uh, results, but there are results that demonstrate that demonstrate the effectiveness of the um, low invasion, uh, low, uh, low um, invasion uh, access. Uh, and surgery for cervical cancer. So there is this sort of a discrepancy. And uh, um, so a new study was initiated. And uh, in my opinion, um, when uh, it is finished, it will uh, demonstrate to us the, another aspect of this surgery. A lot of centers, a lot of sites are involved in this um, uh, trial, and our clinic is a part of that. This trial is based on the analysis, not just of the uh, microinvasive um, access, but um, other uh, negative uh, factors and other risk uh, factors are being investigated in its uh, process. Well, but this is what we are planning, and we hope very much that in the near future, the results of this trial are uh, open for discussion. Finally, I would like to say once again, a radical uh, hysterectomy with a laparoscopic approach, uh, that's a rather difficult uh, intervention on uh, a pelvic area, and uh, special training is needed for that. It's uh, very important to assess properly the surgical procedure to stand standardize the um, skills and the techniques, and uh, it's very important to carry out the surgery in the specialized institutions. And it seems to me that the indications for radical hysterectomy uh, uh, should uh, be based on a uh, raj uh, selection group, and uh, it seems to be that uh, um, uh, 1B, uh, um, A2 uh, uh, visual tumor, no more than two centimeters. That is the clear-cut indication. And for this particular category of patients, this procedure is safe enough. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope that in the near future here in St. Petersburg, we'll have a chance to discuss all the important uh, I think that I to raise two points. One of them is the issue of the tumor size. Again, um, mentioning that a tumor size of less than two centimeters is safe because data shows that the recurrence rates are low is very potentially dangerous to our patients. There's something called statistical power. Statistical power. That means you need enough number of patients to answer a question. When you look at studies, 
that look at the less than two centimeters, I ask you to go to those tables and look at the number of patients that are being used to make the assumption that less than two centimeters is okay. Those studies usually have 20 patients versus 30 patients, 40 patients versus 50 patients. When your recurrence rate is 0.6% to 1.8%, you need significantly higher numbers than 20 versus 30, 40 versus 50 to answer the question. So again, it is potentially dangerous to say less than two centimeters, we don't see a difference, so it's okay to do that. You don't have the statistical power to do that. The other thing is also is that I will mention is the SUCOR study is not a prospective randomized trial. I think it's certainly encouraging that we're looking at data, but this is a retrospective registry study. And I think it's important because it will gather additional information but it is not a prospective randomized trial of selected patients. This is a study that is being led by Dr. Luis Chiva from Madrid, and he's asked many centers around Europe to send their retrospective data and putting it together so that they can look at their information. Interestingly, some of the preliminary results of the SUCOR study will most likely, and again, I don't want to say, but I think that will surprise surgeons that will think that there is no difference. Pedro, can I um, just comment on that, on, on your first question, on your first comment. So do you think, so you made a comment about uh, less than two centimeters, and I totally agree. Is, do you think that there is a place to do a new randomized trial in that particular group of patients? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think that also brings up the point is that in this group of patients, they probably don't even need a radical hysterectomy. I think that we are, and, and Gloria Salva is gonna speak about that. There's one study that conserved trial, it's finished. The SHAPE trial, it's almost finished. And the GOG 278 trial is also almost finished. These are three prospective trials. One of them is randomized, two of them are not. And they may show that in less than two centimeters, we don't need to do a radical hysterectomy. The other point is that, and, and certainly we encourage, I personally encourage anybody that says, I want to do another black trial. Perfect. I think that's great. I think that it's becoming increasingly more difficult to do another prospective randomized trial in radical hysterectomy because, number one, patients are, particularly in the United States, patients are very aware of these results. So many patients are actually telling us, don't do a minimally invasive surgery. I don't want a minimally invasive surgery. So patients may not be willing to be randomized. In our country, institutional review boards, very unlikely to approve a trial that is trying to prove a point when you have NCCN guidelines telling you it's not good to do minimally invasive surgery. You have ESGO guidelines telling you you shouldn't do minimally invasive surgery the institutional review boards will find it unethical to submit patients to another trial to just answer your personal question. So I think that's gonna be very difficult. The other element is that with the results of the conserve, with the results of the shape, if we eliminate the pool of patients of less than two centimeters, then you have an even smaller group of patients, two to four centimeters, that may be potential candidates for this. So I think that your, your number of patients is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And you know it would be great if another trial would happen, but I think it, it's gonna be challenging to complete those trials. There's a trial in Sweden called the RAC trial, R-A-C-C. And this is looking at robotic radical hysterectomy versus open. I, I think again, in trying to get enough number of patients, there's 450 cases of cervical cancer a year in Sweden. If you take half of those being stage three, stage four, that leaves you again 250 cases a year in an entire country that I think again may be challenging to uh, accrue patients onto the trial. You know, certainly I wish them luck and I, and I hope that they are able to complete it, but I think it's become more and more challenging.